Well, we just passed 900 subscribers and I just want to say thank you again to everybody. The 10 footer army is growing every single day and uh, it's just really motivating me to keep going. So again, thank you. Speaking of 10 footers, if you're new to the channel, you probably don't know what that is. So I pulled this straight up from Webster's Dictionary and a 10 footer is defined as a very bad or unpleasant video game, one that you wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. So now we're on the same page. Let's start the video. Okay, so the first thing we have here is some mail that I've got. This is just some stuff from eBay. I've been wanting to play some more shmups lately, some more like Sega Genesis ones uh, and eBay had a sale recently where some stuff was like 20% off so I picked up Whip Rush. Whip Rush was released in 1990 and is a horizontal and vertical shoot 'em up. The title Whip Rush is in reference to the name of your ship. The game was developed by Vic Tokai and published by Renovation. The graphics, colors, and parallax scrolling really pop here and although it might not be the most robust shmup on the console, it's easily worth a playthrough. The next game here is for Sega CD, and this game cost me $5 shipped, so you can imagine it's not anything amazing, but I do like collecting for the Sega CD, and this game was complete, except it was just missing the actual front plastic piece. This is Bill Walsh College Football. Nothing crazy here, and this game actually did also come out for the Sega Genesis. I didn't like this game necessarily at first, but once I actually looked up the button combinations and how the game actually worked, I liked it more and more, and it's actually not a bad game. Bill Walsh College Football was released in 1993 for the Sega CD and the Sega Genesis, as well as the Super Nintendo in 1994. There are 48 teams to play as in the game. 24 are from the current season and 24 are historical teams. Although the game focuses around college football, the game is completely unlicensed and does not use any specific college names. And then finally, I'm a huge fan of the entire Left 4 Dead series and they made actually posters for every campaign in the game. So there's like 12 or 13, I think. Anyway, uh, somebody was selling these mini ones for a dollar a piece, so I picked them up and that was including shipping, but I don't think that these are actually officially licensed by Valve. I'm not saying that the guy printed these off of his home printer because the printing is actually on point and pretty nice, but something just seems off about these. So I don't really know if they are, but still again, I mean, a dollar a piece, five bucks for the a lot. It's nothing I can really complain about. So here's my quarterly Craigslist score. Again, it doesn't happen very often, but someone had this red Wii console listed with five games for $30, and she was actually nice enough to hold this for me for two days because I wasn't going to make it up her way immediately. Uh, it says here that it came with five games, but it actually came with six. In the picture here, we see Just Dance 3, we see New Super Mario Bros. Wii, uh, Wii Sports, Alice in Wonderland, and Jeopardy. A red Wii isn't very common, so for $30, it's a pretty good deal here. And it comes with a Wii Motion Plus. So here's what everything looked like after I cleaned it up. There's the power supply, the AV cables, here's the sensor bar. Everything was just an overall nice shape. Here is the red Wii Motion Plus controller. This one is a little beat up. I think a dog bit it at some point, but it still works fine. And here's the red Wii. You can tell that this system is backwards compatible to the GameCube and has the ports on the top because it does have the doors there. And then here's the red nunchuck again, just a nice shape. I was going to film the transaction of this, but it was legitimately less than like one minute. She was right there, had the bag, I gave her the money and left. Now here's the copy of New Super Mario Bros. Wii. This is the one that came in the cardboard case that I believe this was packed in with the Wii. I didn't have its manual, but I do have some extras laying around, so no biggie. New Super Mario Bros. Wii was released in 2009 and is the sequel to New Super Mario Bros. on the DS. The game allows up to four people to play simultaneously, which can be either cooperatively or competitively. As for the playable characters, you can choose from Mario, Luigi, a Blue Toad, or a Yellow Toad, but they all play the same. Although I do prefer the DS version, this is a must own. And here's the copy of Wii Sports, and this one did come complete with the cardboard box, the manual, and the disc. And like I said earlier, this was advertised with coming with five games, but when I opened the Jeopardy box, there was actually another copy of Wii Sports in there. Wii Sports was released in 2006 and was the original pack-in game for the Nintendo Wii. There are five sports to choose from in the game. Tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. Wii Sports is well known as being one of the highest selling games of all time behind Tetris, Minecraft, and Grand Theft Auto V. This game is completely reliant on motion controls, but they're done properly and are not detrimental to playing. Just Dance 3 was released in 2011 and is one of the two dozen games in the series. The game has the players moving the Wiimote to the music and following the directions on screen. The Wii controls are responsive enough to work fine and including the DLC there's probably near 100 songs here. Just Dance 2019 comes out in October and is one of the few releases that is still coming out for the Wii. Jeopardy! was released for the Wii in 2010 and has been released on countless other consoles before and after. 
The game plays exactly like the show does, where you are given the answer and must supply the question. You have single jeopardy, double jeopardy, where the point values double, and then the final jeopardy question. This is a perfectly playable version of the game. Alice in Wonderland was released in 2010 for the PC, Wii, and DS. It's an adaption of the Tim Burton film of the same name. Despite being a licensed game, this is competently made, from the cutscenes to the controls. The Wii motion controls are a bit wonky, but they do work. One standout feature of Alice in Wonderland is that it's a Wii game with a full set of achievements. Alright, so now it's time to check out the local savers. So first here we have this official Pokemon handbook. This is definitely a later release because this shows Snorlax having a pre-evolution, which I don't ever remember that happening originally, so I don't know when this is from. Speaking of Pokemon, here is a gigantic Pikachu. This actually seems like something that was won at a fair, but I'm pretty sure this is actually officially licensed. Here is a clear see-through telephone. This thing is like so 90s that, I mean, if I had a telephone like this, a landline, I'd use it, but I don't have one. Here's a bag of Pez. There's a Chewbacca in there. I think that's a thing from Nickelodeon. There's just some random ones. Four bucks isn't bad if you're into them. Here is a Halo mask, and the first thing that I noticed about this is that this thing is made really well. It's actually thick plastic, so it'll make a really nice Halloween mask. Here is an Intellivision pinball LCD handheld, and you would have no clue this has anything to do with Intellivision, with the exception of the sticker that's right there. This does come with its batteries, and I just love how someone tried to sell this for a dollar and it didn't sell, and now Savers is trying to sell it for three. Here is a Wii add-on tennis racket, buck fifty, way too much. It's actually a dollar fifty too much. Here is the 10-footer wall that I've shown before. Actually, sometimes there's some pretty good stuff here. I do see this copy of Just Dance 3 here for 99 cents, but when I open the case, it's actually Just Dance uh, Summer Party, and I did pick this up, but I already found someone looking for it before I even got home with it. And then here is Cabela's African Adventures. I've been trying to pick up these games where you use Zapper for the Wii, but this game is just too 10-footer for me where I had to leave it behind, even for 99 cents complete. I, I couldn't stomach buying it. Here's a copy of Connect Adventures. Now this isn't a thin case, so I have no clue when this was packed in, but I mean it's junk anyway. Four bucks for a bag of trash. Here is a Wii that's 40 bucks and a PS2 that's 40 bucks. I'll be passing on both. And then I left this game behind a couple episodes ago, My Disney Kitchen, but it's still there and the disc looks great. So for $1.99, even though there's no back art, I'm going to pick it up anyway and just see what it's like. And then here is another section of video games, and it is just destroyed. I, don't, I mean, this was nice when I was there last time. I don't know who went through here like an absolute tornado and just wrecked everything, but garbage games anyway. Now here's a copy of Beach Volleyball Summer Heat. I've never seen this game, but it is complete in $2, so I'm definitely going to pick it up. Here's a multi-tap you almost never see. They're normally relatively big. This just plugs into the first controller port. It's actually pretty awesome. Here is a nice power strip. This is brand new and it was only 10 bucks. And this is, has that trickle down technology where it's like if you have a PS3 connected to your television, the PS3 won't turn on unless the TV's turned on. Here's Munchkin Zombies. Munchkin in general is a great game to play with friends. And then as I'm going through the comic books, I find this Castlevania one. It's not like number one and it's not even in good shape, but it was 49 cents. So I decided to pick it up and put it in the collection. And I was going through the rest here and it's just kind of standard stuff. I'm not big into comic books. I don't collect them, but it's just like X-Men and what else we got here? There's a Peanuts one in there and just, just random stuff, but nothing I was going to pick up. So here's that copy of Beach Volleyball Summer Heat. As you can see, it's in excellent shape and it was complete. So $1.99 is a no-brainer to pick this up. I like volleyball games personally. I like more arcadey sports games, so this is a pretty good one. Summer Heat Beach Volleyball was released in 2003 exclusively for the PlayStation 2. There are many different characters to pick from, including men and women. The game plays as a two-on-two -two match of volleyball and supports up to four players when using a multi-tap. The soundtrack is comprised of licensed music from artists like Sum 41 and Pink. Overall, the game is fun and some of its art gives deader alive beach volleyball a run for its money this is that copy of my disney kitchen now this is a game i had really never heard of until i saw it the last time in the store this is pretty much kind of like an informative game for kids i guess that teaches you the basics of cooking and and what a kitchen is I, I don't really know i don't know why this game was actually made it is missing its back artwork but other than that you know manual's a little beat but it's in pretty nice shape my Disney Kitchen was released in 2002 for the PlayStation and PC. The game centers around a kitchen where it shows the player the basics of making food, such as baking cakes. The animation, voice acting, and music are all top-notch here. My Disney Kitchen was published by Atlas in Japan. 
And this is the copy of the Castlevania comic. Again, this isn't even like number one or in good shape, but I do have a couple other video game based comic books like Double Dragon and Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. So I thought this would look good on the shelf next to him in the game room. And that was all I found at Savers in the past couple weeks. All right, so now let's see what we can find at Salvation Army. First off, here's this Budweiser cooler. I have no clue what year this is from, but it's metal and it's awesome. I actually love this. It was $60, uh, but half off would have been $30. I just have no room for it and I don't need a cooler. Here's a 360 controller. This one's black. I've been big into collecting these ever since I found the random colors before. And this one is just in beautiful shape. I mean, look at the sticks and look at that scratch glass while we're at it. It didn't come with the back battery cover, but I'm picking it up. Here are some PS2 games, $1.99 a piece. Here's the Sopranos Road to Respect. I don't have that game, so I'm going to pick it up. Here is a McDonald's read-along book with Birdie on the cover. This stuff is really hot right now. I don't need it, though. Speaking of McDonald's, this is a Happy Meal playset by Play-Doh. I've talked about brands licensing themselves out like a Rector set in Lego. I think it does a lot for them and they can make tons of money that way. And this is just a great idea. People love the license stuff. Speaking of licensed Play-Doh, here's a George Foreman grill. Again, a great way. It's a face that everybody knows and it's, it's a way to get people interested in your product. Here's some more we have down here. This Fun Factory Bob the Builder, another license set. Here's a Play-Doh one with Oreo, Chips Ahoy, Teddy Grahams, and those uh, animal crackers. Now here is an Avenger Pop Black Widow. This is not one of the newest line. This is from the Age of Ultron. $5 is a great deal if you're into this stuff and the box is in great shape. Here is just a shelf of the Twilight books. No one's ever gonna buy these. They're paperweights. And now here is an original Xbox controller in beautiful shape. It has its breakaway cable and it's official. Now I would have picked this up because of the condition that it's in, but it was $7 and that's too high for me. So I was going to walk away. Now here's a tidal wave of 10 footer games, Just Dance, Barbie, Skylanders, Bratz, Diego, just trash on trash. And would you believe almost all these games were stolen? Here's Exploding Kittens. I believe this was the Kickstarter edition. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but three bucks. I've been wanting to play it, so I'm going to pick it up. And here's Zombie Side. This game had all of its pieces and it must have just got put out because it was $5 and it's definitely worth five bucks. Here is an Ouya. You don't see these too, too often. It was definitely a failed system. It's like an emulation machine. And then here's that back wall of just random junk. Here we have a white nunchuck. Three bucks is a great deal. I just don't need any more. I've been saying that all the time and then I picked up that sealed one a little while ago. I mean, this thing is so new, it even still has like the wrapping on the connector. Now here is a DJ Hero turntable. I loved this game. I bought the first two games as soon as I found one of these a couple years ago and played it a lot. But the reality is there's never going to be another one coming out. Here are some Wii Motion Plus with the Wii Mote holder. $2.99 a piece on these is a great deal. Again, I just don't need them and I don't know what I would do with them. So I had to leave them behind and there were four of them in these boxes. Now here is a Wii Fit Plus Wii balance pad. It's a brick. It's not moving. 20 bucks is insane. Here's a Highlander Complete Series VHS set. I've never seen the show, I have no clue what it's about, but apparently that's the entire series. Uh, here is a Mummy Mike rubber band holder. I just thought this thing was ridiculous and on the back it just had tons of puns, so I, I let it slide. Here is a Ninja Turtles bicycle helmet. I love this, four bucks is a great deal. I don't need it though, and I'm not eight. Here we got some PC games. This is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I've talked about these before, you have to watch out with the keys. And I am so surprised to have found this. This is Children of Bodom Fall the Reaper. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. It's a legitimately perfect record. Uh, this is kind of back when they were still like this power metal band. Uh, they definitely changed from that now. They're nothing like that anymore. Here's a Five Nights at Freddy's game. This kind of reminds me of Don't Wake Daddy. I think the Five Nights at Freddy's thing has kind of run its course. I don't know if anybody really cares about it anymore, but I remember people just loving it when it first came out. Look at that guy's face on the left. And now, again, talking about licensing, here's a G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra Battleship game. Great idea. They have a good product. People love Battleship. People love G.I. Joe. Maybe not this movie. I don't remember if it was any good. Merge the two together. And I also don't remember if Battleship was normally played horizontally. I haven't played it in forever, so I don't know. Now, here is the most ridiculous of all the licensed games here. This is Star Wars Trouble. Trouble. Star Wars Trouble. I mean, how? Anyway, whatever. They made money. They sold at least one of them, so good for them. 
Okay, so here's that copy of Sopranos Road to Respect. I don't know if I see this game very often. It's not really worth much. And I've never seen the show, but I know it's kind of like GTA, so I was definitely going to pick it up. The Sopranos Road to Respect was released in 2006 exclusively for the PlayStation 2. The game takes place between the 5th and 6th seasons of the HBO show. Road to Respect takes many cues from the Grand Theft Auto series, but instead of being a full-on sandbox, it's done in closed-off story situations. I'm surprised this game didn't receive an adults-only rating as it's incredibly violent and doesn't stray away from many adult themes. And finally, here's that black Xbox 360 controller. Again, it's just in beautiful shape, and I'm going to do a video soon showing me swapping out the thumbsticks on the other ones. I've just been really into collecting them. And then there's Exploding Kittens. It's a game that I can't wait to play. I just hear great things about it all the time. Here's the flea market bright and early on a Saturday morning, and the turnout here was awful. I honestly thought I was going to leave with nothing today. I've been here when it was raining out, and there was a better turnout than this day. Here's the dollar table of DVDs. There's a copy of Men in Black. Love this movie, but I don't need it, so I'm not going to pick it up. Here's an NES. It's beat as hell. It's been colored on with a marker. It comes with no hookups. Really no incentive here to pick it up. I just don't have room for it, even though I could fix it up. And that guy tells me he actually has some games, so he brings this bag out. For Super Nintendo, there was Terminator 2. I don't know if you can see here, but it was cracked on the top. There's a piece of plastic missing. And then there's an Army Men game for the 64. And then we got some 10-footer uh, handheld stuff here. Herbs, Rugrats. What else we got? Tarzan. More Rugrats. More Rugrats. And then Ken Griffey Jr. I would have actually picked that up. It was cheap enough. The guy told me he wanted 25 bucks for all the stuff. When I told him no, he seemed legitimately angry that I didn't want it. Right, here's a Pokemon Valentine set with Pops for a dollar. Don't buy food though. Here is a Rock Band bass. I don't see those very often. Here is a plug and play, a green one. This is something max. I don't know. I have one that I'm going to review at some point, but I don't need another one. It's shaped like a Dreamcast controller. And uh, let's see, here is one of those batteries and charging outlets for, uh, I believe this is for a remote control car from like the 90s, the 9.6 volt batteries. And then under the swimming stuff, here is a Nintendo controller, an NES one, and a zapper. Honestly, this was in beautiful shape, but again, I just don't need it. I have like four zappers and a ton of controllers, so I just had to let it go. Here are some PS2 games that the guy left out in the rain. So if they weren't worthless enough before, they're now even more worthless. 50 Cent is in there, some Need for Speed, there's Tony Hawk. Just 10-footer stuff that I'm not looking for. And then here's a radio. I love these things. I fixed up one of these a couple years ago, and it sounded so crisp, and it was really loud. Really nice, not saying it's better than any stuff now, but it was nice to fix up for a couple bucks. And then here's some of the booths that were inside. This guy just had a bunch of new games over here that he didn't have before. Oh, there's some Wii stuff here, some Xbox, some PS2 stuff. Nice selection. The first game here is Cruisin'. I believe this is the home version of the Fast and Furious arcade game with just all the licenses taken out. Here is a Family Game Night 2. So this whole series has uh, electronic versions of old board games. This has Jenga Operation and some other things. Here's Tony Hawk Shred. This game's trash. Stay away from it. 10-footer of 10-footers. This is definitely one of those King of the, uh, King of the Hill games. King of the 10-footer hill. Uh, and then this is Sonic and with the Black Knight. I don't remember this game was good or not. I was going to pick it up anyway, so I was going to grab this in the Family Game Night game, and the guy just said, oh, both of those weren't supposed to be there. Just the two games I had randomly picked out weren't supposed to be there. At this other booth, they had this Wii wireless battery charging dock type thing, but both of the batteries were missing, so it's essentially worthless. It only had the dock in there. And then the last booth I checked out finally got some new games in. First over here, they had this Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy game for the Xbox. He wanted 15 bucks for it, which is a little high for me. I was only going to pick it up to trade it anyway, I already because I already own the game. And then he also had this Minecraft story mode. I believe this is the disc that only comes with the first chapter. And when it's in the system, it allows you to download all the other chapters for free. I don't remember hearing anything about this game. I don't remember if it's any good, but it was only five bucks. And then he had some Guitar Hero games here. There's 2, 3, and Metallica. Uh, he wanted $3 a piece. There's Guitar Hero 3, and it's complete. Slash is one of my favorite guitar players of all time, and Guns N' Roses is my favorite band of all time. And then here we have uh, Guitar Hero Metallica, also three bucks complete, and they were both like, the discs looked like they'd never been played. And then under this piece of paper here is another Xbox 360 controller. I love this color, and I originally thought this was a knockoff. I was still going to buy it anyway, but what I think this is, is an official Xbox controller that has a case swap. This does have its back battery cover, and the guy has it listed here for $10. The two games in this controller were 16, but I offered the guy 12 and he took it. So I'm happy to add this controller to my ever-growing 360 collection. Okay, so here's the stuff I ended up picking up. Again, this is one of the times where I really thought I was going to leave the flea market with absolutely nothing until I found some stuff at the very last booth that I went to. Here's that copy of Guitar Hero 3. I love that Slash is in this game. 
Here's a copy of Guitar Hero Metallica. I don't know why, I've just been really wanting to kind of play Guitar Hero now. It's not that these games were bad, it's just that they were oversaturating the market and just flooding everything and so many came out that people stopped caring about them. Now this game unfortunately will not let you play with a regular Xbox controller, as some of the other games will. You have to have a guitar controller or a microphone, which I don't have. So I went to get footage to show you guys, and this is what happened. Would not let me play. And here's the controller again, I just love the color, I love that it came with the back battery piece. I do have to change the sticks out on here as they are beat, which I will do in a future video with some of the other ones that I picked up. Uh, what have you guys been listening to? What have you picked up? What are you watching, reading, playing? Leave a comment below and I will pick some in the next video and send you something in the mail. Thank you for watching and as always, stay nerdy. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.